Many historians and the lay public, for the longest time, have considered the Warsaw Rebellion the first modern war. As the movement series, and especially episode 12, illustrated, the Warsaw Rebellion was hardly the first or the only war during this era to use modern means of transporting troops over a long distance. In this episode, we will first of all look at some of the aspects that make a war modern and how the War of the Rebellion relates to other conflicts during the mid-19th century. The question being, was the War of the Rebellion the first modern war? What makes a war modern? We will leave out such obvious categories that do not well apply to 19th century warfare, such as chemical, electronic, or aerial combat. We could consider biological warfare, as imperial powers did use pathogens against indigenous populations. Among the factors that make a war modern are the use of irregular warfare tactics, changes in ground warfare, including the use of the different branches of the armed forces, changes in the communication of information, and psychological warfare. We will leave the changes in naval warfare to the next video, so let's take each item step by step. During war, the military weaker side tends to employ mechanisms of irregular warfare. While one could argue that this type of warfare is as old as humanity, in the modern age, the Spanish had employed it to great effect against the Napoleonic armies in the Peninsular War from 1807 to 1814. The Spanish gave use to the modern term, guerrilla warfare. The early part of the 19th century was relatively calm, with few major conflicts pitching the great powers against each other. Of course, indigenous populations, including in the United States tribal people like the Seminoles, used guerrilla warfare with great effect against the more powerful colonizing armies. Of the major contemporary conflicts of the War of the Rebellion, quite a few witnessed guerrilla warfare. When the Hungarians rose up against the rule of the Habsburg dynasty in 1848, the rebel leaders called on the people to arm themselves with farm tools and fight the invading armies. The Mexicans used guerrilla tactics against the invading United States from 1846 to 1848 and with much greater effect against the French from 1862 to 1867. In a similar vein, the French may have learned from the Mexican failure and created their own guerrilla units to fight the German armies in 1870 and 1871. The experience of the U.S. armies in Virginia, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Missouri, among others, were hardly new or unique. The tactics used by rebel partisans, tolerated but not recognized by the rebel government in Richmond, as well as rebel military units, were time-tested from the start of the century. Weapons technology was rapidly changing during the middle decades of the, of the 19th century. When countries went to war in the early 1840s, they still could employ largely Napoleonic linear tactics, with soldiers using muscle-loaded smoothbore weapons. By the 1850s, that was increasingly changing with rifle technology and the mini-ball. In addition, 
repeater rifles and breechloader weapons became more common. It was not until after the War of Rebellion that the Prussians in the war with Austria in 1866 illustrated the superiority of the breech-loaded rifle over the muscle-loaded musket. However, early machine guns and even more efficient weapons quickly appeared in the hands of European armies. In many regards, the War of the Rebellion was still stuck between the Napoleonic and the new modern military age. At the same time, the greater range and firepower of rifle weapons changed the dynamic of the battlefield. Where during Napoleon's times cavalry was a shock force that could win a battle delivering the final blow, cavalry attacks against massed infantry by the mid-19th century were deadly affairs, as the charge of the British Light Brigade during the Crimean War illustrated. The same technology that made cavalry obsolete on the battlefield also forced infantry into the ground. The Crimean War brought trench warfare for the first time to a major battle. There were no flanking maneuvers, shifting troops quickly from one side of the battlefield to the other. Sieges were long drawn out affairs that created a moonscape landscape, similar to what we see around Petersburg, Richmond, and Vicksburg. But it's the Crimean War that predates these. The middle of the 19th century witnessed a communication revolution with the emergence of the electronic telegraph, more newspapers getting published, and steamships moving faster and more reliably across the oceans. Unlike previous wars, the public at home and political leaders could within a short time read about the developments along the battle lines. President Lincoln camped many nights in the War Department telegraph office to get news about the outcome of battle and campaigns. People could read within a day or two about the outcome of a battle in the newspaper. In some cases, newspapers had correspondence with the army to report the details and set the paper's coverage aside from other papers. Even European papers had correspondence in the United States during the war, such as William Howard Russell. However, Russell gained his reputation as a war correspondent, not in North America, but in the Crimean War. Here, he and others reported in great detail about the events surrounding Sevastopol and the many hardships suffered by, by the Allied soldiers. The new information had a profound impact on the public at home, changing attitudes about the war, just like it would during the War of the Rebellion in the next decade. Psychological warfare has been as old as humanity, bringing terror to people to intimidate them away from fighting. Similarly, Involving civilians has been par a part of warfare for ages, whether that was the enslavement and rape of conquered people by the Romans, or the many atrocities of the Thirty Years' War. By the 19th century, the codified assumption was that war was between armies and should not involve or touch civilian populations. Southerners to this day like to point to William Tecumseh Sherman's march to the sea in 1864 as a terror committed by the U.S. military against the civilian population, taking their food and burning their houses, much less destroying the industrial and transportation infrastructure of Georgia. Of course, much of the atrocities supposedly committed by Sherman exists purely in the Southern imagination. However, Sherman in that was engaging in psychological warfare. It is an interesting question. How strong is your government? Um, how much is God on your side? as many in the war claimed. If the enemy can so freely move through the countryside and destroy and take away property, in that, the War of the Rebellion was relatively unique and modern. European armies fighting each other at times involved besieged cities and civilian populations suffering in those urban areas. However, psychological warfare, such as the mass murder of Viennese and Hungarian revolutionaries by the Austrians during and after the suppression of the 1848 rebellion, were the exception. The War of the Rebellion occurred at a time of massive and quick changes in warfare. The armies used rifled muskets, some repeater rifles, that increased the firepower of the soldier. While rarely used to its full potential, the weapons were devastating. The final year of fighting for the Army of the Potomac represented more what soldiers during the Great War experienced than Napoleon's man. But the War of the Rebellion soldiers were not the first. The Crimean War soldiers had a similar experience. Many of the aspects that make the War of the Rebellion modern 
were also present during the Crimean War. Others had started to appear in warfare during the suppression of the rebellions of 1848. The War of the Rebellion was among the first modern wars, but not the first. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.